What's going on guys, AJ here bringing you back yet another video. Today we are going to be looking into some of the tweaks that you can do to your FSX to get the best performance out of it. Now before I do this video I want to let you guys know that for FSX since it is such an old game you are going to be sacrificing quality for performance and the other way around performance for quality. So if you want the best performance you're not going to have the best quality, if you want the best quality you're not going to have the best performance, uh, so forth. Um, with that being said, my advice, which I am going to be doing, but I will also make a video for that too, also my settings on that once I get those uh, situated, but my advice is to either switch over to X-Plane 11 or P3D V4. Now, I am going to be switching over to P3D V4. <clears throat> As you can see up in the top right corner, all my games, I do have Microsoft X-Plane 11 and P3D V3. Um, P3D V4 is just a new version, so that's why I'm going to go ahead and switch over to that. Now, the only thing with that is that some of your um, add-ons and planes won't switch over. Now, for me, my Airsoft products like the A320 and 21 will switch over. My CRJ7 and 900 series will switch over. And my Captain Sim 767 will switch over. But the three planes that won't are my PMDG 737, 747, and my Quality Wing 787. Now that's a big blow to me because I was one of the people that was sitting there waiting for so long for that Quality Wing 787 to come out and it finally came out now I just got it but now I'm thinking about switching systems now. Th that plane is not going to be coming out for a while for P3D which is a big big bummer but I mean I still have FSX so it's not like I can't go back and play FSX whenever I feel like flying the plane. Same thing with the 737 or 747. But I believe that once I switch over, I'm going to go directly to PMDG and pick up the 737 for P3D. Because before, I made a mistake and I went to PMDG when I had the P3D V3. And by accident, I did it to two planes actually. I bought the expansion pack for the 737 and 777 for P3D, which... I didn't know at the time that you needed the base package. It was just me being stupid and I didn't realize at the time that you needed the base package in order to even use the expansion package. So it'll actually let me use my me going over to PMDG and buying that uh, plane for P3D V4. It'll allow me to use the expansion package also. So I'm thinking about doing that. I'm going to hold off on the 747 because it is $135 and I do not really want to spend that right now. But for now, the A320 CRJs and the Captain Sim and then me buying the 737 will be good enough. Um, with that being said, switching over to P3D with the P3D Academic version being $60 and then the uh, 737 being $90, I'm looking at about $150 to upgrade, which isn't bad at all. I mean, if you think about it, all the money that you put into FSX and then switching over to P3D, it's, it's not really that much. That was my main concern is how much money I put into FSX with all my add-ons and stuff like that. Also, I want to let you guys know that GSX, you can switch that over, the ground services, um, any Orbix product that you got. Like I have Orbix OpenLC North America. I can switch that over to uh, P3D. So I can switch those things over to P3D. That was um, some of the main things I was worried about because I didn't want to have to go out and buy those. Because, I mean, I'm not a money tree here I'm not gonna be growing money out of nowhere so I didn't wanna have to buy all those add-ons and then not being able to and just have my P3D look wicked bad so I did, that was my main thing that I was concerned about but most of those I will even leave it in the comment section what add-ons you can switch over to P3D V4 if you are switching over for X-Plane or FSX but one thing I wanna say also is if you're thinking about switching over to V4 or X-Plane I just want to let you know my system specs, they're in the uh, description below, they always are. And look at those, compare them to yours because my X-Plane, it worked perfect from the start. I've made videos, you guys saw my first video on the 737 landing in uh, West Palm Beach. You guys saw that video, it was working perfect, no lags whatsoever, uh, no frame rate loss, nothing. But now whenever I go and try and load it up, I go and load into a plane and I don't know if I did it by accident or something. Maybe I slowed the game down or something, but I cannot figure it out. My game lags like there's no tomorrow. I've never seen it like this before. My computer's never lagged like this before. Even on my laptop, it never lagged like that before, so I don't know. So take that into consideration when you're considering V4 or X-Plane 11. 
but that's for a different video. This video is on tweaking your fsx.cfg file. I'll tell you guys where to find it because some people have a tough time finding it. Even I had a tough time finding it, but I'll show you guys where to find it today. And there's a few tricks to this. Now, what I'm going to do, as you can see, I have my uh, operating system loaded up. And what you want to do is go into users. AJ, pick yourself, Mine, mine's AJ. Um, then you would want to go into app data, roaming. Mine would be in Microsoft, and then FSX, and then scroll down. Here it is, FSX, and it's a CFG file right here. So this is my FSX.CFG file. Now, I will show you where to find it or how to get it once you uh, if you can't find it. Now, what you would have to do, because I'll go back and I'll show you guys. If you see right here, my app data folder is a little bit blurry or it's shaded out. Now, that is because of a few things. You can go right here down to um, the type to search and just type in hidden. You know, come up show and then it'll come up this show hidden files and folders now you click on that and you'll get this uh, prompted uh, display now down here as you can see it says either don't show hidden files or folders or drives or show hidden files folders and drives now what you want to click on is obviously show hidden files and folders and drives because that is what FSX uh, CFG is it's, a, it's in a hidden folder um, the app data is hidden from you so that's what you want to do so click that click apply I already have it on so I'll just click OK and then you want to go into your operating system users click your name and then go into um, where am I going here where am I going app data roaming and then you go to Microsoft and FSX and here's your FSX.CFG now this isn't your FSX.CFG right here now as you can see this is just a text document you want to even though it says fsx.cfg that is not your fsx.cfg file come over here to the type uh, section and you'll see that this is the cfg file so you want to click on that and it'll give you your fsx.cfg now i recommend you load it in wordpad instead of notepad i find wordpad to be a little bit easier than uh, notepad um, it works for me much better than notepad so i recommend wordpad now taking a look at my fsx.cfg um, I've tweaked it a little bit um, I really ha honestly I'm not a big computer guy so I don't really know what a lot of this means I, the affinity mask I've copied from somebody but everything else I've uh, tweaked myself but I have my affinity mask at 84 now again I'm not a computer guy so I don't really know what it relates to but um, also buffer pools equals zero and then coming down here to graphics um, I have a lot of different graphics. I switch those up. Now, when I switch these up, I switch them up to a high level trying to get the best performance. And I didn't realize that it was really hurting my game because whenever I went to go into my game, it would always crash upon um, loading up around like 63% or whatever. It would just crash. So I was trying to figure out a problem or what it was causing and it was this because when I went back and turned them down a little bit and turned down my settings in my uh, FSX it it worked and it loaded up fine so coming down to graphics though um, my effects quality is on 2 so it, it, it doesn't really matter if you have it up high or lower I mean mine is on 2 and mine still work perfectly fine mine are very good I'll show you guys some uh, pictures later on in the video um, my texture quality is three ground shadows is zero actually I can turn that up I'll maybe I'll show you a few pictures after I'm done after I turn these up and uh, show you mine but my ground shadows I just put that to two my texture quality is three now I will leave my fsx.cfg file down in the description below so if you just want to ultimately just copy this whole thing and just put it into yours that is totally fine with me I don't care you can take it copy it and paste it into your fsx.cfg file just remember to erase the uh, original one or actually before I said that that actually sounded stupid to me make a backup file of the original one just in case mine is too heavy for your system um, because if if you just erase the first one then you're kinda screwed but anyways, moving down, image quality, I have that set to zero. I mean, it doesn't really matter. As I said, lower or high, it doesn't matter. I mean, honestly, I could turn that up to about two. I don't want to turn them up too much because I don't want to um, add some or too much. I don't want to add too much quality to my game and have it crash again. 
but uh moving down we you this is a must actually guys this is a must i added the high me fix equals one um i heard it from my fellow youtuber he said to put this in and it really helps with the gameplay so i put that into my system and it's helped my gameplay it's been much better than before so i recommend putting the high me fix equals one into your fsex.cfg file all right now that we went through the graphics we move down to the sound now the sound doesn't really matter there's only a few things with the sound i mean there's only really one thing that i messed with which was the sound quality equals two i mean the sound you can always mess with it and stuff like that to whatever you like but honestly i don't mind the different sound i mean it really all sounds the same to me so i put my sound quality at two i could even lower it to one or zero if i wanted to but I'm not going to do that i'm just going to keep it at two but uh that basically does it for the sound section there's really nothing you can do there unless you're some um crazy computer guy and you know what any of these mean which i don't obviously i don't know what these mean but unless you're some crazy computer guy you can mess with these and uh switch those around but now uh coming down to display i mean there's there's a couple things that also i don't know what these mean again so i don't mess with these but what i really uh look at is coming down here to bloom effects now bloom effects is something that has hit me before where i've added too much bloom effect you do not want to add too many bloom effects um if you do like the sun uh, blaring in your face then you could turn that up but i did that to my game and it just it looked horrible so i keep my bloom effects down at zero and uh it, it works perfectly fine i still get glares off the water i still get glares off my uh virtual cockpit and stuff like that so i i leave the bloom effects at zero i recommend you leave them at zero too because it really helps and it doesn't make you blind at the end of playing f6 after your uh flight but coming down here to the main, there's really nothing to change in this one. I left this one blank, or I just left it how it was. I don't mess with that one. But what I do mess with is my panels, because my panels, I really... I I try and get as much realism as I can. I mean, you guys know what my videos, I try and shoot for as much realism as possible. Now, my image quality, yeah, it's not high, but it doesn't need to be high. Because if you guys see my videos, the um, cockpit, it's it's perfectly fine there's nothing really wrong with it so I try and leave them as low as possible but getting the best performance as possible that's that's the key to what you want to do with FSX is get the best performance possible with the best quality try and even them out to uh, make it not crash your system or lose performance or quality that's what I shoot for whenever I uh, mess with my settings in FSX and stuff like that but um other than that, my image quality is 1, default view 0, quick tips at 0. Panel opacity, I left that at 100 because uh, I don't really mess with that one. Panel masking is 1, panel stretching 1, units of measure is 1. And uh, that does it for my panel section. Now coming down to my weather section, I don't mess with any of these gust ramp speeds or gust time, any of that. What I do mess with is my cloud draw distance. Anything under cloud draw distance, probably from right here down to right here, I mess with... Um, my cloud draw distance is at 3, my detail clouds is at 2, I'm actually going to turn those up because after I reset them down to a low level, uh, I realized that they weren't they weren't really the best, so I'm going to turn those up to 2. Uh, my cloud coverage density is 5 and my thermal visuals is 1. Now, if you're a guy that likes the clouds and stuff like that, I'll give you a tip. As you can see over here on my multiple files, or my multiple files, I'm losing my voice. Um, all of my multiple files that I have downloaded. I have Rex for Texture Direct. Now that works like a dream when you try and uh, fix the panels and the clouds and the sky and the textures, all that, the water, all that. That does a great deal of uh, success to my game. Now I love that and I thank God I can change it over to my um, P3D. I believe actually, it might, I might not have even checked that one yet, but um, hopefully I can move that over to P3D. But this is my clouds. This is where I mess with my clouds is Rex4 Texture Direct. I recommend you get that. But it is about $60. So uh, you don't really need it, but I recommend it. Um, anti -aliasing, um I don't even know how to pronounce that actually, is one. My anti-stropic, -stro I, can't, I can't even pronounce words right now, is one. Um, coming down to controls, I don't mess with that at all. 
because um, my controls are perfectly fine. They're all configured perfectly fine, stuff like that. So I don't mess with any of those. My slew infos, I don't mess with those either. And now, really, this is the end for it. I don't mess with anything in here. This is just where my file locations are. So um, come down here. You don't really need to mess with any of this. This doesn't really um, relate to your quality. And if you're on VATSIM, you don't need to look at the ATC. I mean, really, if, you, if you're doing it in... Um, the general ATC or the default ATC, you don't really need to mess with that either because it, it's it's just going to be the same. Now, you can change his voice, but they all sound robotic, so it doesn't really matter. And now, the only thing I would say you would mess around with down here is the scenery and the terrain. Other than that, um, there's really nothing else to mess with. The traffic manager, I don't mess with it. I, I get all my traffic to zero. I don't like AI traffic because I always fly in VATSIM, so whenever I fly in VATSIM, say a control will give me some... Um, routes to the runway or ways to taxi the runway and I'll taxi that way perfectly I'll do it perfectly fine and I'll take a corner and there'll be an AI traffic nose to nose with me and I'm sitting here like are you kidding me now there's no other thing or there's no other way for me to get around him but go right through him so I have to go through him and it's very unrealistic so I just put all my traffic down to zero airline GA general aviation uh, freeway, I can actually turn that up. The freeway doesn't matter. But I also keep the ships and ferries down, the leisure boats down, and stuff like that. Airport scenery density, I can turn that up if I wanted to, but I'm not going to. I'm not going to mess with really anything in there. But the terrain also, you can mess with the uh, complexities and re the resolutions of the terrain. Um, that's something that I turn up a little bit but I don't turn up too far because if you turn up too far like I said your system's just gonna the performance of your system is just gonna s just get lower and lower and it's gonna end up crashing at one point like mine did um, I put them up I I would raise it for example I probably went from 24 to 48 in mine I doubled the resolution so don't don't do that go slow steps at a time I know it might take a little bit longer but go slow steps at a time to find the best um, balance of performance and quality that uh, pertains to you but that really does it for my f CFG geez I cannot pronounce anything but that really does it for my f CFG you can mess with the realism if you want to but I have those all set in my settings already those are all my settings my P factor my T torque um, T torque my torque my gyro effect my crash tolerance I have my um, my crashes on realistic so it'll um, detect a crash if I do crash which I don't uh, thank God uh, going back to the uh, days where I just got it I used to crash all the time but my crash tolerance is on one now everything on here you can copy again it will be down in the uh, description below but these are my settings I hope you enjoyed the video I hope this is useful to you I hope um, if you do copy them you are satisfied with it and again thanks for watching the video if you like the video like and subscribe and I will see you in the next video thank you